This is not Mrs. Puff. You may think she's okay. just SpongeBob's boating teacher, but you'd be very, very wrong. They're gonna maybe not look at Mrs. Puff the same ever again, bro. Even though this is about a theory and everything, some of these SpongeBob clips don't make you feel warm and stuff. Make you feel good, like you remembering watching this shit, like good times, type. Bro. We know that her insanity has caused her to live a life of delusion, but if you remember back to the lighthouse episode, she's also become an extreme hoarder. Why does she have Squidward's painting? And a table from the Krusty Krab? And SpongeBob's bike? And Squidward's teddy bear? Oh. My. God. Mrs. Puff is a- Let's see what y'all been talking about when it comes to this shit. Like, what the f is this? This is not Mrs. Puff. You may think she's okay. just SpongeBob's boating teacher, but you'd be very, very wrong. For years, she's been running from her dark and mysterious past, but it's finally caught up to her. And behind it all is a mastermind who's been secretly controlling her life and psychologically torturing her. If you guys Karen. thought my last two theories were mind blowing, get ready for my biggest conspiracy yet. This is the Mrs. Puff theory. What if Karen Loki runs I gotta this whole shit behind the scenes? Wow, the reaction to my last two SpongeBob theories has been insane. How does she know? How does she know? Squilliam, you lying, deceiving. Who is that handsome young devil? I'm glad you guys are enjoying my ridiculously deep dives into this show. I mean, I have to watch so much SpongeBob and read so much of the Wikipedia to put these theories together, but it's worth it because the writers actually take the time to set these things up. Now, a lot of people have been asking, Alex, how do you come up with these crazy conspiracy theories? Okay. Well, I always start these theories by looking for the moments in the show that seem to well, be this implying shit was more so letting weird. on. Like I've said before, Spongebob is a weird show with lots of abstract humor, but I can usually understand the intent the writers had behind a weird joke. But then there's stuff like this. I hope I still remember how to do this. <laughs> was that a condom? Yeah. And it's so confusing and weird that it feels like the writers are trying to imply something beyond just weirdness for the sake of comedy. And nowhere in the show is Yo, there more of these moments. You know that was mistreating him. Yo, he that was crazy. Moments than with Mrs. Puff. And once I started looking into it, it led me down the deepest rabbit I'm hole I've seen from this show. So, let's Too begin. Many new people? Uh oh. Ellen Looks like I'm getting hacked by a hacker. I knew this oh. would happen if I got too close to the truth. Well, it's it looks like. If we don't get to 23k subs, we're at 22.820. All your accounts and chat will be hacked. All the people who aren't subs will be hacked. That's not from me. That's from the, the SpongeBob conspiracy theory. Oh my God. If you're a grunt, you're liable to be hacked. Sub, sub, sub. Ape XTM, sync for the two months. Oh my gosh. You don't want to get hacked, do you? I just want to look out for you, bro. Floppo, thank for the sub. Whoa, exactly. You don't want to get hacked. Zio, thank for the five months. All the gifters, too, are helping keeping the family tight and the community safe. Without the gifters, you're just leaving a bunch of broke niggas liable to get hacked. Who the f*** wants to be chilling, watching something with their streamer, and then boom, somebody walks in and shoots them in the fucking brain, in the chest. You don't want to do that, so that's why you vest up with a YRG. Um, um, sub this. It, it, it shields you from, from ad bullets. And two, you don't want to get hacked. I want to die, Josh. Why? Why, do, why did you say that? I just love seeing that y'all are making appropriate steps to stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for staying safe. Nothing makes me happy than seeing my community safe. You know that. It's a good thing this video is sponsored by NordVPN. If you're watching... Okay, so NordVPN. So chat, so we we're going to get a big sponsorship this month. And it was... It was NordVPN. So these people hit me up. Like people like so basically companies send people out, like send other companies, like marketing companies, to bring you to them. So basically that's what one of them did. Like a bunch of people been that was were emailing me about Nord Nord, but I, I finally replied to an email. I'm like, okay, how much you offering me? I was saying which one could offer me the most. Like, I right, boom, they're like, okay, we're gonna take this proposal back to Nord. They were interested in you. Let's see what happens. They came back to me like two weeks later, talking about some yeah, we they saw that your content isn't suited for them. I'm like, okay. I went to another nigga that hit me up. Like, okay, babe, we'll get back to you. Yeah, Nord got back to us and they realized that, like, yeah, they, they don't want to go in that direction. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, okay. And I went to another one. I'm like, yo, is that offer? At this point, I'm taking the lowest amount. I'm like, yo, is that offer still like available? She's like, yeah, of course it is. Um, just send me your, your 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 demographics and we'll be good. Yeah, I'm sorry to inform you that Nord. Yeah. 
So I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I don't know why you emailed me. Why all you guys emailed me about Nord. And out of nowhere, they're just uninterested now. Even though you said they were interested when I replied back. But it is what it is. Yo, then you're on the internet. Which so I don't, I don't want to see no fucking Nord ad. Get the fuck out of my fucking face. I have PTSD. They broke my heart. They had my hopes up. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher in Bikini Bottom. She's passed Yo, all surf the shark, where you at? One, SpongeBob SquarePants. He's taken her driver's test hundreds of times, and he always ends up failing it and causing destruction and chaos that usually ends up with Mrs. Puff going to jail, despite it not really being her fault. We also know that she right. was once married, but her husband was killed by fishermen. That's my driving teacher, Mrs. Puff. What? Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. Oh, no, Mr. Krabs. She's single. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? Okay, whenever I heard that, I didn't think too much of it. I thought she just, oh yeah, yeah, because it was Mrs. So you think she's married? She doesn't like to talk about it. Throughout the show, there are moments like this that seem to. When you hear that, what do you think? She doesn't like to talk about it. Like, just like a bad breakup or something. Like left her. He's hinting shit. at her having a dark, mysterious past. And in season two, episode ten, no free rides, we get the biggest clue about who Mrs. Puff really is. After SpongeBob fails the driving test yet again, Mrs. Puff has just had it with him and ends up just giving up and giving him his license, even though he never really passed. She quickly realizes that That's this tough. is a horrible idea and he'll probably destroys, end up I remember this the entire town. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so much to stop. My leg. This reporter asks why. Local consensus. Why? This negligent, selfish drive. Yo, SpongeBob was so good, bro. SpongeBob was so fucking good, bro. <laughs> Remember this play yeah. because it's going to be very important later on. And instructor. <laughs> Remember this clip, because it's going to be very important later on. And then she says this insanely revealing line. What have I done? Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name. No, not again. No, not again. Come on, it's like they're just begging someone to make a theory about this. So we now Yo, this oh no, Spongebob writers Puff are crazy. She's originally from a different town. She used to own a different boating school. Yes. And Mrs. Puff isn't even her real name. There's something in her past that she ran away from. Now, there's been some debate over whether she's actually referring to a new name for herself or for her boating school. But I do think she's talking about her own name. Because if she's trying to run away from something in her past, she wouldn't start a new boating school with her real Mrs. name Puff. in the title. Now, when she says again, I don't think she's just referring to starting a new life. Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. Not again. I think at her previous boating school, she had a terrible okay. student just like Spongebob, who she prematurely gave a license to, and it led to something so terrible happening that she had to run away and start a whole new life. That's, that's what I get out of that. That's what I get five, out of that. Doing time, we get a flashback to when she first opened up the school. Ah! Where did I go wrong? With the opening of my new boating school, I pledge that as long as a student is willing to learn, I shall never give up. Hi, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. With the opening of this new boating school, let's keep in mind that this right, is not her first true. boating school. Maybe the whole reason she's making this pledge now at her second school is because she gave up on a student at her exactly. previous school, and that led to her having to run away and start a new life. She's pledging Makes to sense. never make the same mistake again. Now let's skip ahead to one of the newer episodes. Season 12, episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has Spongebob organize all the- Yo, yeah, 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 facts. Yo, tell me these Spongebob clips, even though this is about a theory and everything, tell me these Spongebob clips don't make you feel warm and stuff, make you feel good, like, you remembering watching this shit, like, good times type shit, bro, like- Damn. Yeah, but the theory makes sense so far, for sure. Episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has SpongeBob organize all the stuff she keeps in the school's lighthouse. There's lots of interesting things hidden in the background, but the first thing that caught my eye was this- First thing that caught my eye was this, nigga. Fuck. File labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher to- But the first thing that caught my eye was this- what the, what the, what? the fuck? What else is in there that could be- Kinda crazy. SpongeBob SquarePants. Did you say diary? What does it say up here? The fuck? A diamond ring? Mrs. Puff files. It's interesting. Very interesting. File labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher to have files on all their students, but why would she have a file about herself? But let's remember, she's not Mrs. Puff. 
that's a fake identity she created. And I'm willing to bet all of her fake identification documents are in this file. Back in No Free Run, Yo, she just gives Spongebob a license that she already had for him. So she so clearly be makes accustomed these licenses to that shit. and would probably know how to make I'm fake identifications. Herself. But that's not the only hint about Mrs. Puff's past in this lighthouse. There is something in here that directly confirms all of this. As Spongebob swallows all of Mrs. Puff's junk, we see something very interesting for only a few frames. Deranged boat teacher makes getaway. No way. Be interesting for only a few frames. What the fuck? What? Deranged boat teacher what? makes getaway. Nah, they throw it down her throat. Later, and the creators are still this hiding point. stuff about Mrs. Puff fleeing her old life. It might not look like it at first, no, but we actually get a ton of new information from this newspaper. This is from the New Kelp Post, which tells us Mrs. Puff originally lived in New Kelp City. Then there's a caption that reads, Distracts authorities with balloon animals. And do you remember that Distracts clip from the beginning? I hope I still remember how to do this. Yeah. So whenever Mrs. Puff makes a getaway or commits a crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these Why is this so well thought? This is supposed to be just some simple kid show. Why is this so- What the fuck? Writers don't just do stuff randomly, they have reasons for everything. And the most damning piece of evidence from this newspaper is actually the picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange First photo, right? We have seen Jack. this exact Appreciate same photo of her before. In the episode No Free Rides, when she imagines what would happen if SpongeBob got his license. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. This means that this isn't just her imagination of what might happen. This is this also happened. her remembering what happened when this she happened. lived in Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish reporting the news is the exact same one who reported about her in New Kelp City. Let me explain. We know from the okay. episode, Whatever Happened to Spongebob, that reporters from the Bikini Bottom News can also work for the New Kelp City News. But the real reason I think this is because of his hair. In the entire show, we have never seen this fish reporter with hair before. Why would the creators go out of their way to add that detail? Because Mrs. Puff isn't imagining him as he looks now. She's remembering him from years ago when he used to have hair, when he reported about her in New Kelp City. Yo! Mrs. Puff has been running from her what past ever fuck? since, and is now forced to relive her experience with an unteachable student through Spongebob. Bob. But reliving this trauma has pushed her to the point of complete insanity. And trust me when I say that you have no idea how delusional she actually is. Another running gag. What the fuck is not that deep? Mrs. Puff's occasion. Bro, 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 look here, look here, look here, look here, look here. Look here, you pre pea brained fuck. It's just the facts being laid out in front of you. He just he just he just pointing out the things that make sense. Okay, it's not like he's seeing a penny on the ground. It's like, huh, a penny. Do you remember in episode two where there's a penny and this penny was the same penny and it was like maybe the same correlation with the other penny? No, this is actually shit. That's actually like fucking making sense, bro. Like, like what the fuck? Little nervous breakdowns or moments of insanity because of SpongeBob, and they get more severe as the show continues. At first, she did care for SpongeBob, but in the newer episodes, she literally tries to kill SpongeBob just to get him out of her life. Even SpongeBob just walking up to her gives her severe PTSD. Hi, Mrs. Puff. <laughs> ah! Get the birds! SpongeBob, uh, watch the tree laugh. Wait, Mrs. Puff. Bro, I always looked at this at such a superficial level. Driving? Like. But these mostly seem like just one-off moments, and for the most part, Mrs. Puff is still a functioning member of society, right? I'm going to show you that she's actually much, much more insane and delusional than you may think. And some of the episodes she's in take place entirely in her own head. If we're talking about Stop. how insane Mrs. Puff is, there is no better they're, place they're to They're gonna maybe not look at Mrs. Puff the same ever again, bro. Once again, Spongebob fails the boating test and causes destruction and chaos, which leads to Mrs. Puff going to jail. Spongebob keeps breaking into jail to try and bust her out, but Mrs. Puff actually prefers being in jail over teaching him. We actually get another interesting line about Mrs. Puff's past in this episode. Okay, you can do this, Puff. You can get through this without losing your sanity oh that's a road we don't want to go down again so we know that mrs puff has lost her sanity in the past yo they're, 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 they're putting it in our students. face they're putting it, it in our face she's recovered since then except in this episode she has a complete mental breakdown spongebob keeps appearing in impossible places until she gets thrown into solitary confinement where each wall of the room transforms into a giant shit. spongebob face and then the episode yo, she's sitting on that nigga face so weird and confusing that it rivals the infamous gorilla episode ending as mrs puff freaks out, she suddenly transported back into the beginning of the episode when Spongebob was taking the test. Except this time, Spongebob gets arrested instead of her. Help! Help! No! This is not a good time! No! I can't believe it! It 
was all a dream. I'm not going to jail. Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. So what's Bro. really going on in this episode? Was the ending all in yeah, the head? Is Mrs. Puff it. just caught in an endless loop? I think this entire episode is inside of Mrs. Puff's head, and she's actually on the outside the whole time, but she's been imagining herself inside of prison. I can explain. Listen closely to what the police officer tells Mrs. Puff. I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. And then revealing she's still in a prison uniform despite being on the outside. So, this scene is obviously inside of her head, which means everything we right. see is symbolic. And if we can understand the symbolism of it, we can understand what's really going on with Mrs. Puff. Notice how she's suddenly wearing a black and white striped Whenever I uniform, heard that, I thought he was just talking about her imagination from before that she was thinking about. Why would the which creators really go make the sense, extra though. effort to draw a whole new prison uniform for That's her? That's tough. Well, We've seen her wear this That's black tough. and white prison uniform before. The very first time she went to prison, back in Season 1, Episode 7, Hall Monitor. So when the police officer says, you've already done your time, he's referring to the first time she went to jail. But why is she still wearing that uniform outside of prison? Well, she may have gotten out of jail, but she was by no means free. Having to teach Spongebob is a prison in itself, and she manifests that by believing she's in jail and wearing a prison uniform despite being on the outside. This entire episode, every time Spongebob magically appears, Appears, is all inside of her head. She Let's is completely fucked. delusional, and hints that she's experiencing these hallucinations don't stop there. Yo, Spongebob making this bitch crazy. <laughs> Yo, six episodes later, she goes to a house party mind. Spongebob throws, and while everyone is talking and having a good time, in the background we see she's literally sitting by herself talking to an ice sculpture of Spongebob. You can't tell me this isn't intentional, I mean look at this. Chat. chat, 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 they can't, they can't keep getting away with this shit, chat, chat, they can't, this is, this is right in our face, bro, she's taught. <laughs> now back in the episode No Free Rides, there is a very strange picture inside of Mrs. Puff's home. It's a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff creating an infinite loop. This is something that has confused Spongebob fans for years, but like everything in the show, there is a reason for it being there. One of the Spongebob storyboard artists actually called it the biggest mystery in the entire show. If you think about it, this is just like the end of Doing Time, where she's stuck in an infinite loop nah, of Spongebob bro. failing the driving test. Because it's all symbolic of what her life is, just an endless cycle of Spongebob Luke. taking the test and failing, and no matter what she does to try and escape, she always ends up back in the same place at the end of the episode. So this picture is another symbolic manifestation of what she's feeling. We That's even fucking see depressing. another one of these pictures all the way in Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper. Bro, this is something that the show is consistently alluding to. Mrs. Puff is an unreliable narrator, and anything we see with her could potentially all be inside of her own head. In fact, I believe I found another episode that takes place inside of her head. In in Season 9, Episode 17, Spongebob Long Pants, Spongebob goes to a different boating instructor and actually gets his license. But as soon as he does, we briefly cut to Mrs. Puff waking up. You pass. I finally got my driver's license! Oh, oh. Lock your doors! By your windows, it's the end of the world! Now, this seems like it's probably just a throwaway gag where Mrs. Puff yeah. somehow senses that Spongebob got his license and it causes her to wake yeah, up yeah. and freak out. You know, it's a good bit, it's funny, but I have a question. If the joke is that she's supposed to be waking up at the exact time Spongebob gets his license, how come she wakes up at night when Spongebob clearly gets his license during the day? Because this entire episode actually takes place inside of Mrs. Puff's head. And this is the only part of the episode in the real world. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about, but I'm glad it's over. But let me pause for a second. I'm sure some of you are already wondering if this contradicts my previous Spongebob video. They're about to ruin the show for me. If you yo, yo, they're about to ruin the motherfucking show for me, bro. If you haven't watched that one, the gist of it is that the entire show is a documentary television show. Not she a hater? <laughs> Not she a hater. So, and Yo. everything we see is actually being secretly filmed by scuba divers. And there's a ton of evidence to support it. I'm very proud of that <laughs> video. You should definitely check it out. But if everything's supposed to be from a camera, then how are we seeing things from inside Mrs. Puff's head? In fact, how do we see dreams and flashbacks and thought bubbles? Well, I think the simple answer is that even though we view the show through an objective camera lens, the world itself still follows the rules of a cartoon. You can never tell another living soul. Wait, wait, hold on! What was that? 
My pen is out of ink. Plankton! You'll never get me formula. Not even in a flashback. In the world of SpongeBob, you can imagine Yo, something that was, that was actually crazy. Still see, record, or interact with it because no, that's just how cartoons work. Back to the theory, we know that her insanity has caused her to live a life of delusion. But if you remember back to the Lighthouse episode, she's also become an extreme hoarder. And looking at her collection of junk is like a look directly into her mind. So there's gotta be something we can learn about her from it. There's a picture of her boyfriend, Mr. Krabs, the hall monitor belt she gives her students, the mean drawings her students make her, SpongeBob's diary, a boat the safety helmet. Wait. Spongebob's diary? That's what I'm thinking. Why the Why fuck does she is that? Have Why the diary? fuck does she have the that shit? The last time we saw that, it was safely put away in Spongebob's library. Yes. What's it doing in her lighthouse? Yes. And why does she have Squidward's painting? And a table from the Krusty Krab? And Spongebob's bike? And Squidward's teddy bear? And the hair curlers Mr. Krabs had? And that statue of Squidward? And that diamond ring? And that crown? And that bucket of radioactive waste? And that jellyfish sign? Oh. My. God. Mrs. Puff is a kleptomaniac. Mrs. Puff has been- I'm sorry. Mrs. Puff I'm sorry. I got scared. Kleptomaniac. I, I got scared. Mrs. Puff has been stealing from everyone in Bikini Bottom. I can even prove that her pet snail from season three, episode 19, was stolen. My snail is up a tree. I've had her since I was a little girl. Excuse me. Girl. That was a fart. My fault. Hmm, you've had that snail since you've been a little girl, huh? Then how come that is the exact same snail Squidward had four episodes ago in the Great Snail Race? I wouldn't let Snally here play with that mongrel mutt. She's <laughs> a purebred. I love Squidward. She's a purebred. <laughs> Yo, that's fun. I feel it, Squidward. I feel it. But also purebred shit. I feel that. I feel that. Snally here play with that mongrel mutt. She's a purebred. <laughs> she even has her own papers. I got, I got creamy corn and karma papers in the room. Lot up, oh, boy. Register with the A B K C D D D. You know what I'm saying? He even has her paperwork. Mrs. Puff clearly stole me? the snail from Squidward. But why the hell would Mrs. Puff steal all this other junk? What possible use could she have for any of it? You can see all that. We can find answer to that question by looking at this green hat and this purple jacket. These were gifts Mr. Krabs bought her on their first date, but she ended up feeling uncomfortable receiving them and gave them back to him. I'm afraid I just don't feel comfortable accepting all these gifts. Right. Except apparently she's not too uncomfortable to steal stealing them back all afterwards. The shit. So clearly Mrs. Puff isn't stealing this stuff because she wants to use it. She just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her- See, so, so people might just say like, what if the creators just wanted to throw a bunch of shit that we've seen before within all that was to just throw it all in here to be like, oh, remember that? Oh, remember that? So there's that, but at the same time, it's like, okay, but why? They could have put a bunch of other random shit that we've never seen before. You know what I'm she just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her everyday life. And remember, this isn't the first time she's gone insane. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a road we don't want to go down again. In fact, I have reason to believe that she started stealing things way back whenever she first went insane. I hope I still remember how to do this. I don't think she's just talking about remembering how to condom. make balloon animals. She's probably also referring to remembering how to steal a boat. And if that's not enough for you, mm. in a Spongebob comic book, she actually admits that she used to rob banks, and she wears the exact same ski mask. Mrs. Puff lives a completely delusional and miserable life, all because she has to teach Spongebob how to drive. It's led her to steal from the- Imagine driving a bitch so crazy. Like, imagine driving like one of your teachers so crazy, you single-handedly drove her to insanity. Fucking stealing shit. <laughs> <laughs> she cares about and completely mental fucking loops talking about ice but cubes and that shit. That begs a very important question. That's if SpongeBob is causing her life to be so miserable, then why did she, she just kill him? him? Oh, After yeah, why did she just teach him? Yeah, that. That's what I meant. Totally be justified to expel him. Right? I mean, she will literally try and kill him so she doesn't have to teach him, but for some reason, she can't just expel him. It's almost like there's someone forcing her to teach SpongeBob. Okay, that might be your. Okay, you're gonna have to convince me of that. You're gonna have to convince me of that. Back to the episode No Free Rides, after prematurely giving Spongebob a license, she steals his boatmobile so he can't hurt anyone. In the end, this causes her to get arrested and go to jail, but then Spongebob tells her this. And besides, the warden says she'll let you go early, if you do her a favor. What's that? Free driving lessons! So get to leave prison early if she gives free driving lessons. That seems like an oddly specific requirement. And that's not the only time this gets Bro, that's one of those things that you hear and you're like, ha ah, ha because you know, like, like, you know, saying Spongebob and free driving lessons because he sucks at driving and you're ruining his lower life, haha. <laughs> but when you think about it, it's like, yo, why would the warden say that? Unless you just think Spongebob made that up. 
mentioned either. In season 9, episode It's when he starts thinking deeply into shit. Like, wait. Bumper, we get this scene. If only SpongeBob could pass his boating test, he'd be out of my life once and for all. Unfortunately, I keep getting reminded of the consequences if I get too angry with the little nuisance. Consequences? Are you telling me that if she refuses to teach Spongebob specifically, she'll be violating her parole and get sent back to jail? Why does the prison even care if Mrs. Puff teaches Spongebob? Is it just part of some weird community service? But things start to get bro, really suspicious bro, at bro, the bro, end bro, of bro. Season 7, Episode 5, Summer Job. Once again, Mrs. Puff ends up in jail, but this time she's forced to go to a prison boating school. Oh, wow! A driver's education class. Good day, class. Oh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> she having a nightmare. Well, she slapped herself. Dear Mrs. Puff, I'm following in your footsteps and got a job as a driver's ed teacher for the summer. Yo, SpongeBob OST is top here. Who in the right mind would find SpongeBob for the summer? Who in their right mind you know would hire Spongebob to do this after he's literally destroyed the city countless times while driving? Is this just another one of Mrs. Puff's delusions? Or is the prison intentionally forcing her to be around Spongebob just to torture her? I mean, look at the way the guard forces her to sit there and listen to him. Get me out of here! Oh, 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 ow, oh, ow, oh. And look at that evil smile he has as he watches her endure this torture. Then go horny. There is something very strange going on with this prison. Then, then they got a 10, bondage eight, king. The getaway, Mrs. Puff meets a criminal named Dorsal Dan and starts to get romantic feelings for Dorsal him. This is Dan. also while she's still dating Mr. Krabs. Shame on you, Mrs. Puff. At the end of the episode, they both accidentally land in prison, and the warden puts yeah. him in solitary He's confinement. Warden, I found this one pulling up outside the prison. Still rising. Dorsal Dan, a notorious getaway driver. Toss him in the clink. I'll wait for you, my little tender fuck. <laughs> In or out of jail, this prison will stop at nothing to make sure she is alone and miserable. But why? Who's behind all of this? Why would anyone care this much about torturing Mrs. Puff? Who's the mastermind pulling the strings? Well, maybe it has something to do with her old life in New Kelp City. Maybe she crossed someone and they've been plotting their revenge ever since. But I've looked in every single frame of New Kelp City and there is nothing, nothing. connecting it back to the prison. I've looked literally everywhere nothing. and there's not a single person from the city that has anything to do with Mrs. Puff. Until? Well, I mean, maybe except for... The this. literal warden of the prison she's being kept in! He may be hiding slightly off screen, but that is clearly the same warden of the- Okay, 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 hold on. Let's think about this, let's think about this. Okay, he got the same suit. Color is a little off, because, you know, the color changed the night time and the different episodes in the future, different seasons and shit. Same tie, same two dots. We can't see the handkerchief. We can't see it, so we can't tell there's a, hand a pink handkerchief there. Same lips. Yo, I go lie. The Bikini Bottom Prison. I go lie, that's tough. some random background character that the show reuses all the time. He is a very distinct- I go like that's tough, that's tough, that's tough, that's tough. You can call me out that's on the tough. Squilliam video all you want, but not this that's time. Him, that's him, that's him, that's that if the warden was originally from New Kelp City, then he'd probably know about Mrs. Puff's dark past and her true identity. So, why hasn't he exposed her? He's just kept quiet about the fact that one what of his inmates is living a completely false identity. She'd probably even get more prison time when they find out who she really is, so why hasn't he said anything? This is where things get very interesting. So, we know Miss Bro, why she on Miss Puff dick, bro? Did she try to clap them puffy cheeks and, and, and she got she got an L Riz? So now you're just trying to ruin her fucking life, bro? Like, what's happening, bro? This is Puff prematurely gave a student Dimesia? No, that's school license, one of those, yeah. and that Dante's led to them plan? causing chaos and destruction. Maybe this student accidentally it's did something one. terrible to the warden, and he's blamed Mrs. Puff ever since. Whatever happened was so terrible that it caused him to move to Bikini Bottom and get a job as the warden of the town's prison. And to his surprise, he finds out that one of his inmates is actually the person he blamed for that terrible thing happening. This works out perfectly for him. He can finally get his revenge on Mrs. Puff by making her life miserable. It's All he has to do is reveal too, her dark bro. secret, and she'll be stuck in jail for much longer. Except for one small issue with his plan. Mrs. Puff actually likes being in prison. 
One day down, 2,528 to go. Oh, that's just shy of four years without SpongeBob. I'm going to enjoy this. So, he comes up with Yo. a new plan. Keep Mrs. Puff's secret and let her out of prison early, but only under the condition that she has to teach SpongeBob. He's literally turning her normal life into a prison. And yep. he makes sure going back to prison to a board spongebob isn't even an option for her anymore because he'll make sure he'll that spongebob be right is always in there with her and he's not gonna let her escape and start a new life like she did in new kelp city he makes sure to give her an ankle bracelet that doesn't let her leave bikini bottom i can't even leave town without violating my parole he is the mastermind who's been controlling everything Bro, this entire time subtle ass what? shit his insidious plan doesn't even end there this is not the first time we've seen the warden character we first see him in season four episode two crabs versus plankton in this episode, Plankton slips on some water in the Krusty Krab and decides to sue Mr. Krabs for everything he owns. And then guess who shows up out of nowhere and offers to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer? What I really need is a good lawyer. Hello, did somebody say lawyer? Richard A. Bottom Feeder, attorney at law. I couldn't help but notice that despicable display. Richard A. Nah, Bottom bro. Feeder, the warden of the Bikini Bottom nah, Prison, bro. is also apparently a lawyer? That's kind of strange. Those both sound like major careers. You usually wouldn't imagine someone being both. Right. Then he says he'll be Mr. Krabs' lawyer completely free of charge. So, uh, how much is this gonna cost me? Actually, I won't charge a dime unless we win. For your fucking soul. That's what's gonna cost you. Give me your fucking soul, you're gonna see. Give Miss Puff the same deal. generous of you, Richard. He seems very confident that he can win the case. Take but his right fucking before soul. he goes to court, he slips on some water and says SpongeBob will have to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer now. Oh, this is gonna be a slam dunk. <laughs> his lawyer speak to me wrapped with pain can't move looks like you're gonna have to handle this one son he tells spongebob that he has to represent mr krabs even though he himself called spongebob a liability actually spongebob we won't be needing any testimony <laughs> from you why you'll be more of a uh <laughs> of a liability than an asset. But it's okay, because apparently all SpongeBob needs to win is inside of Richard's briefcase. Everything you need to win <laughs> is in this here case. <laughs> really? Everything? Except when SpongeBob gets to court, he realizes that Richard never gave him the combination to the case. It's uh, all in here. Really? Yep. That's what he right said. In I, here. I remember this is shit, there bro. A problem? Uh, your lawyer didn't give me the combination. Either Richard A. Bottom Feeder is the worst lawyer in history, or this is all part of his elaborate nah, plan to ruin Mrs. Puff's life. This nigga! First, he finds out that Mr. Krabs is being sued, and he wants to ensure that Mr. Krabs loses the case because he wants to destroy any chance Mrs. Puff has at finding love. So he pretends to be a lawyer, even- I FORGOT ABOUT MR. KRABS MS. PUFF! ...offering his services for free, something Mr. Krabs can't resist. He makes Mr. Krabs feel confident that they're gonna win the case, and then at the last second, no. he pretends to get into an accident so he can't represent Mr. Krabs. Instead of finding a real lawyer to replace him, he tells the most incompetent person for the job, SpongeBob, that he has to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer. And he gives him a case that allegedly has all the answers in it, without actually giving SpongeBob This is the biggest hater of all time. Show me a bigger hater! Failure in court. Show me a bigger hater! uses to let anyone get close to Mrs. Puff, not Dorsal Dan, and not Mr. Krabs. This guy has squillium levels of hate for Mrs. Puff. But why? What exactly did her previous student do that warrants this much torture? It can't be something as simple as him or his property getting damaged. It has to be something life-changing. Something like losing a loved one because of the student's reckless driving. And I think the show Such gives us deep. one last hint about who this might have been. All the pictures of Mrs. Puff's house are very meaningful to her. She's got photos of Mr. Krabs, her pet snail, and of course those infinitely looping photos that told us so much about her mental state. Right. But there is one more photo in this house that might be the key to this entire conspiracy. In season 12, episode 14, Plankton's old chum, we see a photo of someone we've never seen before on Mrs. Puff's wall. There's some surprising similarities between this character there is. and That's what I thought so too. the green color, the red bow tie, the overall fancy, serious appearance. It clearly is the same person, but maybe no. this is someone related to Richard, like a father, a son, or a brother know. that Mrs. Who, who Puff's that? former student killed. And the reason she keeps a photo of him up is to have a permanent reminder to never make the same mistake of giving someone a license who doesn't deserve it.
Bruce. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher who once made a terrible mistake that led to the loss of her business, yeah. identity, sanity, and any chance at finding happiness. Yeah. I like to think that there used to be a time when she was happy, back when her husband was still alive. If only he was still around today, maybe she wouldn't have to face all of this on her own. Yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone. This I is, hope you enjoyed. This was truly is what amazing. I would say if I was done, except her husband is still alive. Woo! Let's do this. In the Spongebob movie, Spongebob and Patrick travel to a gift shop named Shell City okay. and a pile of dead fish turned into knickknacks and ornaments. Except they end up setting off the smoke detector, which activates the sprinkler system and brings all the dead fish back to life, including a very familiar looking puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Puff is alive. Well, wait a second. If he's alive and he escaped, then why hasn't he gone back to Mrs. Puff? Why is she still alone? Because remember, she ran away from their home in New Kelp City and started a new identity. So sadly, Mr. Puff has no way of finding her. The tragedy of Mrs. Puff's story is that her happiness is just a city away, but she can never even leave town because that would violate her parole. Richard A. Bottomfeeder probably even knows her husband is alive and is making sure they're never reunited. As the name says, Richard really is a bottom feeder. This video took a ton of time and effort to do all He's the a bottom research feeder, for, but a so top really tier fucking enjoyed. hater. I'll tell you that watching, much. And thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this theory. Go to nordvpn.com slash alexbale or use code alexbale. Let's see. Damn. Damn. Fucking Nord. We on trolley problem vibe timing are an NBL. Feeding you to your dogs or something? I need to know you got some good music taste real quick. This the most addicting quiz. Let the end. Nigga got a Cora. That's what Cora would do. I have found new inspiration to live. I now aspire to be like Richard. Than Nah, that nigga's a fucking demon. Miss Puff is his most popular one. That was insane. I need that plus. No, do not touch that. Said I'm on three plus right now. If I'm being honest, hope my feelings shoot out like a rocket. Niggas thought they had the swag, but I'm really on it. Look at you, just window shopping that new bag I bought.